Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's take a deep dive on some products I've been trying recently. There have been a ton of things that have been coming into my collection and I wanted to make sure to take the time to check back with you and give you my perspective on whether these products are working for me and who I think they might work for if they're not ideal for me. Before I get started, a couple things you need to know. First of all, I'm 47 years old, so I'm dealing with textural changes on my face due to aging. Totally fine, that's just the stage of life that I'm in. Second thing that you should know is that I have combo skin. Uh, it's mostly normal everywhere, but I do get a little glowy, AKA oily, like right in this area. There's like a little window like right here. So like from here in, um, in the warmer months, I, I get a little oilier here and right here, but at this time of year, it's just the nose. All right, so I'm gonna start with this. This is a product that I've been using for several weeks now. This is from Wet n Wild. It's their Glass Correct Primer. I have the green one. I picked this up because I have been trying to find a way to reduce the look of some of the redness that my skin has after I'm done with all of my skincare, and I want a glowy, hydrating primer. And this starts out a little greener than you would think, but it kind of, I don't know that I'm seeing as much color correcting as I would want. You can see it here, but if you leave it on that heavy or you put on too much of this, my glowy skin turns this into like an oil slick. So I feel this is good for people who do like a glowier look, for people who aren't looking for a serious amount of um, color correction. This is gonna help a little bit. Um, I don't know, I've used almost half the tube. It wasn't full to the top when I got it, but I've used enough of it to know that I like the texture that it makes my skin feel before I put on foundation. But it definitely is a little on the glowy side, so if you have oily skin, you may not like this. You may wanna color correct redness in a different way. Um, but it's actually a really pretty product, and it's not expensive at all. I don't know that it gives me as much redness reduction as I would want. I'm still looking for a little bit more and I do more correction with concealers later. It's actually really great. Just don't put on too much if you're a little bit glowy because you see that shine compared to like without, yeah. It's a pretty glowy and I, I do like that about it but I can't wear it with everything. I tried a couple of foundations. Neither of these are brand new. Uh, one's been around for a while and I just finally, you know, said okay, I'm gonna Great, I'll buy it, I'll do it. And I fell in love and it's this. It's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. I have been so head over heels for the formula of this. Okay, remember how I mentioned aging skin? So the problem I have is that product settles in these expression lines in my forehead or like right in through here. And the texture I have between my eyebrows, like the bridge of my nose and right here, like this little section here, in the last six months, it's changed dramatically. And I also find that I have, um, you know, with, with some of the wrinkling that I have going on here and here, and in this area, product settles. This doesn't. There are very few products that don't end up just kind of sliding into those expression lines in my face. I love how this doesn't do it. This is one of those foundations that also, the minute I put it on, it starts out looking pretty and it wears really well for 12 plus hours. I don't feel like I need to touch this up. And it has more coverage than you would expect. The other thing that I, it took me a long time to figure, I was like, why won't it pump out? You have to turn it. Um, I started out with a shade that was too dark for me. And then um, I went into the store and the next shade lighter was too yellow. And this one is still too fair. You can see that it's too light, but I would rather it be too light and be able to bronze it up a little bit than it being too dark. But the one thing I'll tell you is, even though this is kind of labeled as medium coverage, this is all the coverage I want and then some. And the problem that I've had is the older I get, the more that those full coverage foundations look like a complete, I don't know, like a cake face. This doesn't, this is beautiful. It actually looks really pretty, really radiant. And of course, right now it's sitting on top of that glowy primer from Wet n Wild, but when you rub it in, it looks like skin. And that's what I want. Like some of the spots that I have on the back of my hand are greatly reduced. You can thin it out, 
you can build it up if you need more coverage. You can, it's definitely buildable. I think the best way to describe this coverage wise for me is a high medium coverage. It's not medium, it's not full coverage. It's somewhere halfway between. And you can definitely build it up to full coverage. But I would say like one pump is like, whoa, that's a lot more coverage than I expect. The reason I prefer a light medium coverage, somewhere between light and medium, kind of like that medium low end coverage, is that it you can actually see my skin and I want something to look skin-like. Even though this is much higher coverage than I normally reach for, it still looks like skin. It still looks like skin. It has a beautiful glowy base. It stays put. It doesn't settle into my crinkles and my wrinkles. She's gorgeous. I love this foundation so much. A foundation that hasn't worked for me, and this I know is an unpopular opinion. A lot of people really like this foundation and think it's absolutely gorgeous. I always struggle when the shade match is wrong. And that's why I took this one back to get a shade that was better suited to my skin tone. The first one was way too dark. So there is no lighter shade. This is the lightest one there is. And on top of that, the undertone is so off. I'll tell you more about it, but this is what I'm talking about. I mentioned this recently in a, you know, makeup favorites and fails. This is definitely a fail. Do, do you see the color of this? <laughs> this is a problem. So this is the balm foundation, the four in one balm from Age Perfect L'Oreal. And I was hoping, I love the original serum foundation from the Age Perfect line. I think it's gorgeous. It is a little deep on me, but it's not bad. Here's the thing, is that when I start rubbing this in, do you see how tangerine it is? It's, it's like, I, I feel like I'm putting orange creamsicle pudding all over my face. That's what I feel like. And it's definitely too warm for me. I'm neutral. On top of being warm, this is the lightest shade. There's only eight shades. And I feel like when you have a smaller foundation range and it's supposed to be a balm foundation, it's supposed to be light. Okay, let's keep rubbing it in. It's still, the difference between here and here, I can't wear that unless I do it from here to like here. And I don't wanna get this on my clothes. So the shade range for me is a no. Now, if you're not as fair as I am and you can find your shade, here's what I'll tell you. I struggled to get this to work on my combo skin without a primer. And the reason that I love the original serum foundation from the Age Perfect line from L'Oreal is that it looks glowy, it's beautiful, it looks skin-like. I get some coverage, but not too much. And it kind of doesn't go where I don't want it to. It doesn't sink into my crinkles and my lines. And I feel more confident and radiant. I was expecting that from this product because it's another age perfect product. And I feel like unless I put down a mattifying primer in my glowier areas, this was gone. My skin ate it up in a really short, like four hours. And it was like, I had no coverage on my nose. It's like I knew I put something there. So I needed to do that. The other thing was being combo I felt like I had the best longevity when I powdered it. Now, normally what I'll do is I'll powder my T-zone and under my eyes, and that's usually enough with the rest of my foundations. This one, kind of like my skin ate it up in four to five hours, not just in my glowy areas, but like on the rest of my face as well. The problem I had was I did find that it settled into like my fine lines here, in through my forehead. And I thought if they're designing a line for mature skin, wouldn't you want a formulation that wouldn't do that? That's why I had to set this. It was, my skin did kind of eat it up, but the thing that bothered me the most was that it was kind of going straight into my expression lines in my forehead. I would sit here in my nasal labial fold. I would get it kind of in the corners of my mouth. And when you have foundation that's not the tone of your skin catching in those small areas, it becomes very evident. Um, it is pretty on the skin, it does look skin-like, if you can find your shade, and I feel like this would be best for people who have normal to dry skin, and people who are combo and oily may not work well with this, because I felt like my natural oils just made it kind of go everywhere I didn't need it to, and it didn't last as long as I hoped it would. I tried another foundation, but this one was completely different because it's a powder foundation. This is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. It's $11, it's very affordable at the drugstore. 
I was worried that I didn't have the right shade. And I feel like this might be too fair for me. This is the shade 120. There's a try on video. I will link it for you in the description box below and I will put it for you here as well. But I struggled when I tried this on for the first time, mainly because I was using a natural hair brush. This is the Wayne Goss face brush number 12. I was using this to buff it in and I, it picks up a ton of product. So I was like, okay, fine. Then I switched from using a natural hair brush to using this guy. And this also picks up a ton of product. And because I am dealing with textural changes on my skin, you know, with the wrinkling that I have, I have to be really careful what powders I put on my face. And it has to look like I'm not wearing powder. It has to be a lightweight powder. This, I feel like would be great for people who aren't dealing with you know texture, aren't dealing with wrinkles. I feel like if you have really, I don't know, if you're younger, you might really love this because I feel like there is a ton of pigmentation to this. Like the coverage on this is kind of crazy amazing. But there's, there's coverage here. But the problem that I had is it really made my skin, you can see it here, look drier. And I had lotion on my hands today, but do you see how it kind of looks like it's sitting on top of my skin? That's a problem for me. I find that the older I get, I need to powder just where I need powder, like under my eyes and around my nose in the summertime, like my full T-zone. And I have to leave other parts bare because the minute I take powder all the way up over here, my skin starts looking dry and powdery like this. And I feel like this product it just makes me look older. Instead of being 47, I look like 147. So do you get coverage from it? Yes, um, but I feel like it's not making my skin look its best, it's making it look 100 years older. So I feel like, I don't know, maybe my teenage daughter would love this. Easy coverage, it's affordable, um, it's beautiful on skin that's like super perfected, but I feel like once you're starting to deal with, you know, larger expression lines with maybe some dryness, if you don't, ha if you have combo skin and you're dry in normal areas, I feel like this would kind of cling to all your dry patches. This is the first powder I've tried in a long time that when I put it on, I didn't think I had any dry patches. I was like, whoa, I had a lot of dry patches on my face because it kind of just like clung to all of those areas. It does have coverage. I feel like it does a pretty good job. I have been using this actually when I have a duo fiber brush like this that is synthetic. And I find that if I'm not picking up too much because the original brush I was using with it, like I was gonna do a buffing technique, oh, it was too much. The sponge was too much, but a light wispy brush like this, I have been able to use this to set my face because I have a little bit of it around the corners of my nose and over the top and right around in this area. This powder though, I can't put like on my forehead because I already have some issues there. This only accentuates that and this looks terrible under my eyes. So I feel like it is a good product. You just have to know what your makeup goals are and what maybe your skin type is and how this might interact with it. So it's not a bad product, it just didn't work for me for those reasons. A powder from the drugstore that I have been absolutely loving and I'm wearing today is this. I don't know why it took me so long to try this. This is a gorgeous powder. This is the Light Illusion from Flower Beauty. I used to really love their Satin Finish Loose Powder. Loved it. I didn't like how clunky the packaging was, but I really liked the product on the inside. This. Okay, she's a little thick. She's not any thicker than say like your elf packaging or maybe just a hair thicker, but the truth is it doesn't bother me. I, I love the product in here so much. It works beautifully. I feel like this sets my face. I can use it with a damp sponge. I can use it with a powder. There have been times that I've taken just a little on my finger and like, you know, gone over some areas where I need like a little more coverage here. I have done that in a pinch. <laughs> But I feel like this is a gorgeous powder. A lot of people say that this is a great, affordable alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder. I, I really think so. I think this is a really gorgeous, beautiful powder. So if we're looking at these side by side, I feel like this one is just a little bit warmer. This one has a little bit more peach to it. These are the lightest shades of both of them. This right here is the Charlotte Tilbury. This right here is the one from Flower. They look nearly identical on my skin. They're lightweight, they're finely milled. 
They don't bring any extra texture. They don't sit on top of my skin and make me look dry and powdery. If you're looking for a really beautiful setting powder and you've loved this one, but you can't bring yourself to spend the $45 every time you need a new one, this one's great. And it's like, what, $12, $14? Whatever it is, totally worth it. Another product that I picked up in February and it's been on a lot of beauty favorites. I, I finally had to put it in the drawer. I'm like, okay, I can't use you again for April because I've been using you for so long. It's this, it's the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Radiant Baked Blush. This is the shade Baroque. This is from the Masterpiece Collection. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Absolutely love. It's a really muted, soft, and I know this is one of those, for people who have seen review this collection, a lot of people say that it's a highlight for them, that it's not um, deep enough to be a blush. It's definitely deep enough to be a blush on me, and I find that it keeps me from ending up in clown territory. Sometimes I over blush and I end up with like, like a swath of like 1980s blush, like right here. <laughs> and this soft shade really keeps me from going there. I can build it, I can put it on as much as I want and it never gets to be too much. The other thing that I like from this is there is a natural sheen and a radiance to it. You can see it here in the pan. It's just lovely. Another product that I absolutely love and I'm like, boy, do I, don't, do I need another one? Yeah, I kind of did. It's the Pat McGrath blushes. These divine blushes literally are divine. They're so gorgeous. This is the shade Flirtatious. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm already starting to lose the imprint on the pan here. I think this came in February, late January. Love so much. So this is the shade Flirtatious right here. Let me swatch it next to the other one. It tends to be a little bit rosier and pink, but it's matte. Again, a really nice soft blush. If you have fair skin, this one is gorgeous. I have the one in um, Nude Venus, which I love, but I always felt like I wanted something that was a little bit less peachy and a little bit more dusty rosy. That's this one right here, and it's not too much. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have yet to run into a product that M creates that I don't love the formula of. I like the formula of every single one of their things. Some things I reach for more frequently than others, but I love this small eyeshadow palette. It has six shades, three mattes, three shimmers. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like I can get a really soft, natural look. I've been wearing this one for work a lot too. I feel like these have been very work friendly for me and I like that. But I like that we're getting a lot of different textures here. I can use one, I can use two, I can use all the shades. And it's absolutely lovely. The other thing that I love and I'm sure I'm gonna go through this super quick, is their lip cushion. This is the shade Mona Lisa. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that, shiny, glossy. This is one of those that is a little bit thicker than I would expect. And I would normally expect something that's this thick and shiny to kind of feather out on my lips. It doesn't really go anywhere. I have a bolder shade from M. This one is in Mystic. It's kind of like a real, you know, bright kind of plummy, violety color. They stay inside my lip line. I don't end up with like little feathering trails. I really love this formula. Love, love, love. If you want an easy, light, comfortable lip product, these guys. And I know this type of formula is so popular right now. You're gonna find it at the drugstore. You're gonna find it at high end. A lot of people are making this glossy, kind of lip gloss in a tube formula that you could just crank up. Beautiful, but this uh, shade in Mona Lisa, chef's kiss. First time I tried this, I was struggling so hard. This is the Thicket Stick It from NYX. This is their new tinted fiber brow gel. So the reason I struggled was because like, it's almost the size of a small mascara wand. This is a big, big, huge sort of wand. This is the size of most brow gels and look at the wand difference. Like it's pretty intense. So I also have, really sparse hairs from the arch out through the tail. And this was a lot. The other thing that this has, it has like really extreme hold. I feel like it has the hold of the NYX Control Freak, but it's tinted and there's fibers. So I normally back comb my brows and then brush them up to where I want them. I find that if I do that with this, I get too much product on there. I don't know if it's because the wand is so large or because the formula is so, um, it's so buildable. I find the best way for me to use this 
is to fill in the places where I have really, really, really sparse hairs, like from here out, or if I have a gap somewhere with a pencil. And then instead of back combing with this, I just go in and brush it up. And I brush it up a couple of times as I'm going through to the end. And then I'm able to go through and just kind of quickly kind of sculpt it and place it where I want. And once it dries, this stuff does not budge. I am so impressed with this, but this is one of those that if I am not careful, I end up with like little brown fuzzy caterpillars on my eyebrows. This is a real intense product and I have to be careful how I use it, but it's kind of worth it. There have been days that I've used just this on my brows and I've gotten a really nice look, but I have to quickly place it and let it along because if I keep going over, 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 you can build it, but then it gets kind of goopy and then it kind of dries weird. So this is like a put it on like once and leave it alone. Um, and if you need any more like coverage in areas, instead of going back with the second coat, maybe take one of those um, fine liner brush tip pens to fill in your gaps or a really fine pencil tip and fill it in. But actually I have been liking this a lot. I've been using it more than I thought I would because the first day I used it, I was struggling so hard. I have fallen in love with this Inglot gel liner. This is their AMC liner. This is the shade 90. I have been using this every single day. I wear it when I go to work because I need to know that nothing is going to budge. <laughs> I can't be touching my face because I'm working at a dentist office. My hands are in gloves. I'm cleaning um, all sorts of dental tools. I'm, you know, it's, we're dealing with people's like oral hygiene. I can't be like fixing and tweaking my face. I need mascara that's not going to go anywhere. I need liner that's not going to go anywhere. And I need my eyeshadow to stay put. Guess who has been winning that like hands down? This liner is gorgeous. I have been using this Delium 706, which is the tiniest little pointed brush, and then their small angle, which is the 762. And I can pick up just the smallest amount and then like right along the lash line, and then I can stamp it on the outside corner and make a little kitten wing with this. Love this liner. This is the one that I've been using the most, but they both work really beautifully with this. Um, the other thing that I had been hoping to do with this and, and, and maybe my eyes have changed. Maybe they don't tolerate makeup the way that they used to. Um, before 40, I used to be able to tight line my upper waterline where I put it in my upper waterline and then um, I wouldn't get any transfer to the lower. I could blink if I got the right formula. Everything now when I blink, it transfers from the upper waterline to the lower. My eyes are much waterier than they used to be. So that's probably just me changing and aging. Okay, but this, if I take it on this little teeny tiny brush, and then I can actually go and stamp it right along like where my lashes are growing out of my eye, like just underneath there, not the entire waterline, but just kind of in through there and then just jab it in all the places where I have little gaps in my lashes. And that really does make my lash line look fuller, look darker, look more luscious. It gives me more of that eyelash fantasy that I want with short, sparse lashes that point down and don't hold a curl and are, are not amazing. Um, this gives me this little brush and this product right here. It doesn't go anywhere. When I blink, I don't have as much of it on my full waterline that I don't get transfer down here. It doesn't go anywhere. It is a bit of a chore to take off at the end of the day, but if you've got a balm that breaks up, you know, waterproof makeup, you'll be fine. This has been great. These two things here have been letting me have the precise, more graphic liner that I've been wanting and to give me that fuller lash effect. I love this. These, okay, I didn't know that flower eyeshadows could be this amazing and feel this luxurious and high end because the way that these look, look how metallic they are. They are in insane. Look at how pretty these swatches are. Look at how metallic. You get that look on your eye. I find that they stay really well. I don't find that I end up with a ton of sparkle fallout if I'm careful with application. I find that if I pick up too much on my finger, you know, and then I try and put this on my lid, sometimes I will get sparkle fallout below. But if I'm careful and I don't pick up too much and I press it in and then I start to kind of slowly drag it across, it works great. I like these best applied with my finger because when you apply them that way, look at how metallic they look. They're just insane. This palette has made me want the Jungle Lights 
I was like, no, I wouldn't use all of those shades. Uh, stick with what you have, but I love this formula. The last thing I have to share with you are the lip products. I didn't purchase a lot of lip products in kind of the last little bit, and I've been picking up a whole bunch, like in the last couple of weeks, it's been like all the lip products. So I have to be better, I need to be better. But the one that I really fell in love with in February and I used nonstop is the one that I'm wearing today, it's this. This lipstick is beautiful. Um, the packaging is everything I could ever, like my heart could ever dream up and desire. It's red, it's velvet, it's gold, it's like gorge. And then when you finally pull it out, it's a little heart. I mean, it's adorable. It's a beautiful shade too. I love a red lipstick. Red lipstick is one of my favorites. So this is what it looks like. I have it on with a different lip liner here. So I feel like it's a little darker on my lips. Okay, if we're talking formula, I feel like this formula, it's matte. It doesn't end up drying my lips out. I can wear it for hours. I feel like it's fairly long wearing for a bullet matte lipstick. Some I can get, you know, four to six hours out of. This definitely wears for six hours. I can end up drinking from a coffee mug, drinking from a water bottle, eating a meal, and having very little of it kind of lost in the middle. The other thing that I like about this, some formulations of lipsticks end up kind of collecting in the outside corner and I'll see like a little line, especially with a more pigmented lipstick. You don't always see it with a nude, but with a brighter color, sometimes I'll see those little teeny tiny lines like kind of heading down outward, like where my mouth, you can see them right here, these lines I have. Sometimes they fill up with pigment and I don't like that. This doesn't really go anywhere. I don't find that it, it trails out in those little lines. It doesn't like bleed out into the edges of my lips. I, I feel like it stays very tidy and it walks the line between staying where you put it, being matte, but not being drying. I don't ever feel like my lips end up flaky or dry at the end of the day. It's super easy to reapply. It just kind of glides right over the top of itself. I like that. The one problem that I've had with this, and I was sure that having this little heart shape because it has kind of a hard edge to it would make it easier to get to the edge of my lips. I struggle a little bit and sometimes I get this lipstick where I don't want it, but it's the shape of the bullet. I don't know how long this little edge right here is going to last, but I don't think it's gonna last forever. Pretty soon that little heart-shaped part is gonna be gone and it's just gonna be a really nice, beautiful lipstick. But I feel like the formula is very similar to previous matte Lancome lipstick formulations, but I feel like it's it's a little bit more nourishing and um, it's just more comfortable to wear. Like they, they kicked up the hydration in this kind of recent reformulation. They've also changed the hourglass. It has a slight hourglass to the packaging because the old, Lab Salut Rouge packaging was just completely straight like this. You can see that there's a, a slight difference. Even though this has that velvet packaging, it kind of has a tiny hint of a waist. It's not quite hourglass, but it's bigger at the top and the bottom than it is in the middle. So the regular packaging has this shape that looks like this. I feel like it's an elegant lipstick. I love it because it looks like so extra. <laughs> But this is not one that I would feel like if I want to maintain like the beauty of the velvet packaging that I could just drop in my purse. I don't like that it needs it to be a little bit precious. I already have a couple of nicks in the velvet where I can tell, oh, yep, there's a flaw, something scratched it there. I hate that I have to do that. So it lives here on my makeup table, but she's pretty and I have been loving this. Another one that I really love that I wasn't sure I was gonna because the first time I tried it out, I was like, oh, mm. it was me over applying. I really like this. This is the new L'Oreal Paradise Balm Gloss. I think that's what it is. I have the shade 40 Blissful Blush. And when I pulled out the doe foot, I was like, I'm not getting enough product on here. Well, there is enough product, I promise you. There is plenty and it's not a really heavy formula, but it's glossy and this is the perfect color for me to wear on a day when I'm not wearing a stitch of makeup and I want a little rosy lip. Uh, this is the perfect color to wear if I'm wearing a really bold eye and I need something that's a little dialed down on the lip. This is great to go over anything because I need a little bit more hydration on my lip. I have been using this in so many instances and I really, really love it. The problem that I had when I first tried it on, I was like, I need more. And I kept putting on more and I kept trying to build it up and I got to the point where it got a little, this is what I needed, this is what I did. And the problem I had with this is when I over applied, it sank down into the corners, it started to string and pull look like a cheese pull in the corner of my mouth 
and then I was having it kind of build up right on the edge of my lip from where it goes from dry to wet and I had like a, a bunch of product building up like a little ring on the inside of my lips and bleh, it looked terrible so the formula is great it's moisturizing it lasts really well on my lips it feels fantastic and it's a really beautiful formula as long as I don't over apply. So I would say if you see this and you're curious and you want to try it, just don't put too much on, you know, wear it like this and not like this and you'll be fine. The last product I picked up, I picked up three of these because I liked this so much. I was like, I've, I'm sure I'm going to love the lipsticks. So this is the Paradise, what is it called? Their Glow Paradise Gloss Lipstick. Mm, I don't know. <sighs> okay. Obviously, I've used a lot of this one. You can see that, you know, she's she's been used a lot. This is my favorite shade out of the three that I got. This is the shade 150. It's really sheer. It's very much like a balm. And maybe it's a lip, it's a Glow Paradise lipstick, balm lipstick, I don't know. Whatever it is, I like it and it's shiny. But in about 30 to 40 minutes, I need to apply again, which is how after two weeks of this, I've gone through this much of it because I'm not wearing it every day, but the days that I am wearing it, I am forever reapplying. I can't get this to stay. I don't feel like it's drying on my lips, but it's also not nourishing because it's not there long enough. I'm constantly like, so my lips don't get too dry. My lips aren't feeling like super plump and hydrated. It's just a lipstick, but it's really sheer. If you like a sheer, almost not wearing a lipstick shade, you might really like this. The shade 150 in uh, Rose Mirage is my favorite. The one that I don't like so much is the shade uh, 110 Pastel Exaltation. It's a little too pinky nude for me, and it ends up looking, um, and maybe it's just that I like pinks better than this reads a little bit more peach. It, it looks kind of um, 1980s, you know, grandma on the beach, that peachy kind of milky peachy shade on me, and I don't really prefer it, um, but I do really like this one. So probably a color preference. I do find that they're comfortable, they're easy to wear. If you don't wanna be putting on a product with a mirror, these are easy to do without a mirror, but you're not getting a ton of color. Like one swipe is gonna be, it's gonna be this, like hardly anything. And if you build it up, you'll get more color like this. But the fact that they are kind of supposed to be like a balm, I expect more nourishment from something like that. And the fact that I'm forever reapplying, like where did it go? That's what I don't like about it. It's not a bad product. I think you just need to know what you're getting into when you purchase it. It's not going to last for two or three hours like a lot of other sheer lightweight lipsticks do. It's really, I find that it's gone in a real short amount of time. They're comfortable, they're nice. I do prefer this lipstick from L'Oreal. This is the Color Riche Plump and Shine or just a regular Color Riche Shine. I feel like those are really nice and um, I would recommend if you want like kind of a sheer lightweight, these last longer on the lips than the Glow Paradise ones. The other thing that I've never loved about any L'Oreal lipstick, and it's a personal pet peeve of mine, is that they all fit together. They have this little notch here and you have to find the notch in the packaging. And sometimes, like, I'm trying to put it on and I don't have it lined up. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's stupid, but every single L'Oreal lipstick I have is like that, you know? They all have that little notch. And maybe it makes people feel like it's a little bit more luxe. It's just a point of aggravation for me. So there we go. And that's why I probably have stayed away from a lot of L'Oreal lipsticks is because I just can't handle the packaging, getting it to line up just right. Sometimes I don't have the patience for it. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this update on the makeup was helpful. What's been working really well for me, what I think would work for somebody else if it's not working the best for me, and the small stupid things like the little pet peeves that I have with the packaging or the, the wear time of stuff. Let me know if we have a difference of opinion in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.